evening. I'm excited to welcome you to this evening's concert brought to you by the Idaho State Civic Symphony. I'm Jordan Herget, President and CEO of Portniff Medical Center. As an advocate for the arts in our communities, Portniff is proud to once again be the season sponsor of the symphony. Together we advocate and look to a future filled with music and the arts. Enjoy the concert. Good evening and welcome to the season opening concert of our very own Idaho State Civic Symphony. It is wonderful to be here with you tonight. This virtual concert is truly an historic event as the symphony roars ahead and once again brings to life the magic of music in our magnificent concert hall. Thank you for joining us here tonight and thank you for your continued support of the arts at Idaho State University. Welcome to the first concert for the Idaho State Civic Symphony season, Metamorphosis. Like many things in our world, the symphony has had to change how we are able to connect with one another as well as with our community. And so this season will be dedicated to how music has changed throughout the centuries and how we too are a part of that growth. We are so glad that you were able to join us tonight. We miss seeing you in our magnificent concert hall and look forward to the time when we can all meet together again. While we patiently await that time, we at the symphony know how important music is during these uncertain times. And so we offer this free virtual concert for you, our patrons and friends, to help bring musical excellence into our community and your home. Now sit back and get ready for the concert. We hope that you enjoy being a part of this historic evening. Thank you for your continued support as we strive to bring you the wonderful musical experience that you have come to expect from your Idaho State Civic Symphony. Our first piece of the evening is Johann Sebastian Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 5. As the number indicates, it is the fifth concerto of the total of six Brandenburg concertos that were written for and dedicated to the Margrove of Brandenburg in 1721. This particular concerto is a concerto grosso, which essentially is a small group of soloists who are then accompanied by the larger group. The small group of soloists in the Brandenburg Concerto No. 5 include a solo violin played by Dr. Hiri Choi, a harpsichord played by Lara Larson, and a solo flute played by myself. And we are then accompanied by the larger string group. We hope you enjoy this performance of Brandenburg Concerto No. 5 in D major.
our next piece comes to us from the late Romantic composer Edvard Grieg. The Holberg Suite, which was composed in 1884, is a neoclassical composition that hails back to the style of the Baroque period. Much like traditional Baroque suites, the Holberg Suite consists of five movements that reflect 18th century dance forms. We first hear the Palladium, which is then followed by the Sarabande, the Gavotte, the Air, and then the lively Rigodon. Enjoy.
Our last piece of the evening is the Vivaldi Concerto for Two Cellos, which was written in the 1720s while Vivaldi was working at the Pieta, or orphanage. Tonight, I had the wonderful opportunity to sit down with our cello soloists, Dr. Eleanor Cox and Sophie Stratton. Here is a bit of that interview. Good evening. So tonight we have with us Dr. Eleanor Cox and Sophie Stratton, our two soloists for the Vivaldi Concerto for Two Cellos. Thank you so much for being with us and thank you for playing this wonderful piece. We have some questions to kind of get to know you a little bit better and introduce you to our public a little more. Uh, how long have you been playing cello, both of you? Let's start with you, Sophie. How long have you been playing cello? Well, I started when I was three years old. Three years old. And how about you, Dr. Cox? I was four and a half. Four and a half. So, all right. You were just babies when you started this. So how small is a cello when you start at that young of an age? Um, was it an eighth size, probably, or less for you? It was a sixteenth size for me. I was a small child. Yeah, well, you were three. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but those ones are about the size of a violin at a sixteenth size. Wow, that's amazing. And you both knew you wanted to play cello. I wanted to play the violin. And um, the Suzuki program was just starting in my hometown. And there was a wait list for violin, and there were scholarships for cello. And so as soon as my parents heard the word scholarship, they said, sign her up. And um, the deal was that when my name came up on the wait list, I could switch. But by that point, I was pretty in love with the cello. So, Fantastic. Yeah. That's amazing. So how long have you been members of the Idaho State Civic Symphony? Do you know? I I think six years, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, six years. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. And what has been one of your favorite things being a part of the symphony here? Uh, I just think the uniqueness of this particular ensemble, um, that it's faculty and students and community members allows for me to get to know a lot of people in this community that I wouldn't otherwise have any contact with. And that's been really fun because we have some incredibly interesting people in our community. Yeah, we really do. How about you, Sophie? How long have you been part of the symphony here? Um, not consistently, but uh, off and on for the past 10 years, maybe. I was playing in the symphony when I was a teenager, so it's kind of like home to me, it That's seems fantastic. like. That's fantastic. And as one of our community members, what draws you and what makes you think that this symphony is a special symphony for you to be a part of? Um, well, first of all, it gives so much enrichment to our community. And I feel like that's an important thing to have as a town and especially a town in Idaho. It seems like we do have some I don't know if it's friendly competition between cities here in Idaho, but that's just the way we are. Um, yeah, the symphony really adds a lot to what's available in Pocatello when it comes to giving people something beautiful, I guess. Right, our arts and our culture there. So when were you first introduced to Baroque playing? Uh, as the Vivaldi is a piece that comes from the Baroque era, uh, I know that, Dr. Cox, you have some expertise in the area. Uh, when were you first introduced to it, and what did you like about it? Well, I mean, I think everybody starts getting interested in, every cellist gets interested in Baroque music because of the box suites. Um, so my love for the era started when I was, you know, seven or eight years old, hearing, hearing Yo-Yo Ma play the Bach cello suites. But um, it wasn't until I was in my master's degree that... I walked into a lesson one day and my professor said, you're going to play Purcell's Dido and Aeneas, here's the score, go check out the Baroque cello. And I said, the, the what? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that's how, how I got my start. And as I got more and more into, into it, I realized that um, I had a particular love for, for the style and the period instruments and things like that. So that's how it started. 
And we do have a Baroque cello and a modern cello with us. Can you both talk about a little bit about the similarities and the differences between the two instruments? Um, well, uh, they look very similar because they are um, the same shape and relatively the same size. Um, Baroque cellos, there were kind of two versions, a very big version and a smaller version for a while, and then this became sort of the standard approximate size. The biggest differences are the strings uh, on a Baroque cello are gut strings, um, and um, there is no end pin, so there's just a, a button is what they call it. Um, and that, that's the biggest difference in the instrument itself. Some Baroque cellos have a different kind of neck. This, um, this doesn't. Some, some of them are sort of a wedge that just comes straight out of the cello and the necks are very, very thick. So I'm thankful that this does not have that because it's very hard to play on those. And then the shape of the bow, um, this is one model of a, a Baroque bow and you can see that um, it's a very different shape. Um, this bow, the modern bow, was meant to um, allow a player to have a very um, even sound all the way out to the tip and back. Um, this one, not so much. So you're going to get a lot more sound here near the frog, which is here, and a lot less sound out at the tip, which is why down bows are stronger and up bows are weaker. And so this bow actually um, is made to help even that out a little bit. Um, so you can see the difference in shape, especially. Um, so I'd say those are the main differences. And will you be playing the Vivaldi on a Baroque cello or on a modern cello? Well, I'm, we're playing on modern instruments um, because we're playing with an orchestra of modern instruments. So I actually only use this cello um, when I'm playing with other uh, performance practice types of, of folks. So um, people who are on Baroque instruments uh, or harpsichord or something like that. Um, because the sound is different enough, I think, that it wouldn't um, mix as well as us both playing modern cellos. Fantastic. Well, Sophie, I'm gonna turn a question to you. When we looked at the Vivaldi Concerto for two cellos, what was something that you love about, or what is something that you love about that concerto? Well, it's a little unique to have a concerto written for more than one instrument. Um, I feel like the only thing better than one cello is two cellos or more. Um, As you would, right? <laughs> right? I agree. <laughs> So that's a very special thing. This is a concerto that a lot of cellists grow up learning. Um, it's part of standard repertoire for um, studying musicians. And so it's really magical when you can actually hear an orchestra with you playing something that you've grown up loving so much. This is kind of one of those pieces that I feel like a lot of cellists look forward to learning when they do, and it, it holds up over time too, which is fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun to play, and it's a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you faced when you put this together? Hmm. Too many to count, or just too few? <laughs> no challenges at all. Um, I, I think there are just I mean, with any live performance and live ensemble, there are just more factors because there are more people, I guess, more factors of timing and playing as a group and dynamics and just all of the regular things we deal with on our weekly, mm -hmm. I don't know, symphony rehearsals. Yeah, articulations and mm -hmm. um, things like that, I would say. I don't know. I think actually our playing styles are fairly similar in a lot of ways, so it wasn't as hard as it could have been. Mm -hmm. But we're, we still have some spots we're working out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are very excited to have you be a part of our opening concert for this season. And thank you both for not only playing 
for the concert, but also agreeing to be a part of this interview. And it's wonderful to talk with you. And it's also wonderful having both of you be a part of the symphony. So thank you so much for sharing your talent with us and with our community. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, thank you.
thank you for joining us for this evening's performance. I'm Julie Sorensen, and on behalf of the Idaho State Civic Symphony, we look forward to seeing you at our next concert. Thank you.